Hello, grade six teachers, and welcome to your November Social Studies grade six pacing guide outcome overview. So in the month of November, we are focusing on our uh, provincial government outcomes. So we're looking at things such as how is the provincial government structured? What are the responsibilities of the local government? How do uh, how does a bill become an act? What are the services? How do they collect revenue and expenditures and budgets? We are also looking at the responsibilities of legislative mem members of the Legislative Assembly. We're looking at responsibilities of the Cabinet Minister. Uh, and of course, uh, as we continue on, we're also looking at the role of the Lieutenant Governor uh, in December and looking at a few other things in provincial government a little bit in December. So when we're looking at provincial government, it's really important that we not only look at just those specific outcomes, but also the skills that we can include for our students throughout. So we really want to look at uh, their ability to acquire and develop thinking strategies. So you'll see throughout the pacing guide, there's a lot of opportunities for visible thinking routines to challenge some of our values and our thoughts about our government and the system. We want them to apply skills of cooperation, conflict resolution. We want them to really focusing on some of those, demonstrate those skills of oral, written, and visual and media literacy. So when we're looking at that, how are you including opportunities for your students to read, write, discuss, and represent how they know uh, and what they are learning in social studies? We really want them to start expressing those opinions and started looking at why they have those opinions and how we can uh, can maybe alter our opinions when we are given access to new and different information. We want to look at current events throughout, again, especially if you've got a local election happening, a provincial election happening, any uh, bills that are being passed into law, we could regularly watch the assembly. There's a link inside the pacing guide as well, so you can go and watch sessions with your students, things like that. Um, so we're really looking at kind of getting this big idea of provincial government and how they as individuals can impact it as well. It's important to continue looking at 6.1.6, .6, where we're analyzing how groups and associations within the community impact decisions making. So this is when you might want to talk about lobbyists or you may want to talk about how different uh, organizations influence the government. So when we look at the pacing guide, we want uh, our students to continue working on reading strategies such as making connections, text to self, text to world, connecting what they're learning in social studies to how it impacts themselves, but also to other texts maybe they've written, current events, things like that. We want them to continue to uh, working on what is the main idea when reading nonfiction, pulling out most important information, and using a uh, graphic organizer to help, to help them go through that. So again, we do want them to engage in reading material and really looking at those different things. When it comes to writing assignments, you can click here and it will take you to another doc that's filled with some different ideas and different writing assignments you can have your students engage with. Uh, so for the month of November, we're looking at um, how does the provincial government impact your daily life? This might be a journal entry, this might be a review or an exit ticket, perhaps a couple sentences, um, explain using details and evidence, examples of provincial government electoral process. And then again, remember, we wanna relate it back to those democratic pillars. So anytime we're talking about a concept, whether it be local government, provincial government, uh, ancient Athens, the Haudenosaunee uh, Confederacy, we're really trying to encourage our students to think back to how does this fit in with the pillars and values that we learned back in September. So that's an important piece, but those writing assignments are there. Uh, you can write cause and effect text structure. You can compare and contrast text structure. All of that will support your students with developing thinking strategies when, when engaging in new information. Uh, visible thinking routines that we want to look at is, of course, I used to think, but now I think that's a great uh, ending to any daily lesson where you're looking for an exit ticket. We've just learned something about provincial government. Now we're going to write, I used to think, but now I think. When looking at videos, images, perhaps we're going to look at the way that the chamber is set up, uh, having our students analyze those images using See, Think, Wonder early on in the year will really help them to, to focus on that source analysis when it comes to the PATs. So See, Think, Wonder is one of those things that you want students to habitually do once they see an image, a diagram, those types of things. So the more you use it and the more you model it in your class, the more that will become a thinking habit for your student. And we really want to encourage that, especially with the source analysis for grade six. Parts, people, and interactions, another great one. We talked about it with local government. Again, it's a great opportunity. And there's some slides here to support you with doing a parts, people, and interaction for provincial government. 
Uh, and then we're going to look at some different activities that are here. So we've got provincial government lesson slides. So those are all broken down into slide format for you. Uh, and then you've got things like uh, the tale of two time cap or the tale of two time capsules, looking at provincial government. Building future voters is a great resource for that. Becoming a candidate chat stations is a great uh, engaging oral activity for your students where they're looking at the different qualifications of a candidate and talking about those different pieces. If you want your students to start engaging in debates and looking at different uh, outcomes, the tug of war for provincial government issues is a great one for that. It's a great introductory for the debate, especially if you are planning on heading to the ledge and doing the mock council. You could do a tug of war first as a stepping stone to get your students to understand different ways of debate. There's hexagonal thinking to help your students build and organize those connections within the provincial government. So that's a really important one. And again, different ways to get our students engaging uh, cooperative learning, UFAN pick jigsaws, chat stations, all of those tutorials are there for you. So I hope you enjoy this unit of study. Um, provincial government can be a really exciting opportunity for students really to look at the things that are affecting them and, and, and their community at large in the community of Alberta. There's great opportunities within some of these resources to get your students engaged with that. If you need any support with provincial government or any of the November outcomes, please uh, let me know. You can send me a message via Teams or via email. I'm happy to talk to you one one look at some of the planning go through some of the pacing guide ideas i can come and support some of the thinking routines or student activities in your class um, and again i'm here to support you so i hope you have a great november and reach out should you need anything thank you bye, -bye.